um, problem-based learning and an internship scheme, we've kind of come up with sort of two policy proposals that we can sort of integrate together just as a way to rethink uh, higher education. It's focused primarily on higher education. Uh, can you like start again? So yeah, we're identifying, the problem for us is really that higher education is just, is quite lacking in a way, you know, it's like, it's not, I mean, an undergraduate degree does not mean what it used to because of the lack of workplace guarantees. And we feel that one of the reasons that this is, is because of, well, primarily because of the abundance of undergraduates now, and also because of the lack of practical um, workplace skills that traditional like university education offers you. So, I mean, there's a lot of reading, but there's not a lot of practical skills. There's not a lot of connection with the workplace in most degrees. Um, and yeah, we think that primarily this is due to a focus on too much, uh, too much emphasis on knowledge and not enough on creativity or innovation. So we think that this is most adequately tackled through um, problem-based learning, um, which is basically when you know, you're, you're learning through tackling a problem like we have been today. You know? So we set a challenge and we aim to resolve that challenge. And in order to do that, you need to research and understand the challenge. And we think that this will provide a more holistic based approach. Um, and also it ties into the internship schemes in that um, it crosses the bridge between education and the workforce to tackling like problems that may arise in the workforce. Okay, so um, the target audience with the problem-based learning is going to be mainly uh, individual universities. So the problem-based learning scheme is mainly just for unis uh, for us and also for students. So like to advertise it to students to put the pressure on their universities to incorporate more problem-based learning within the curriculum. Okay. Um, oh, um, so probably problem-based learning was created in the McMaster Medical School in Canada and it's, as Anna said, it's a method of studying where you apply your knowledge instead of just learning something and regurgitating it back as if you would do like on a typical exam. Um, and we think currently <laughs> it's incorporated into some degree such as medicine and law and that's across the UK and even across the world. So it is practical and it is a possible solution, but we think that um, this could be incorporated into the humanities and other degrees as well. Um, we do think that you would need to um, talk with academics and try and sort it out on what actually the problem could be that student use, students use to tackle, um, to learn more. Uh, but we also think that problem-based learning could be expanded to extracurriculars that people are engaged in because these show, like something with the B Buchanan Institute, um, we're tackling a policy issue and that could in turn be a research project that someone, um, sorry, can you please go to the so if you tackle a research project and you use that and you do it over a semester, we argue that that could be used as credit-based um, university modules. Um, and this would be incorporated into the curriculum through academic mentoring and gr the grading of proposals. So this also shows how <coughs> it would be practical and work um, in the workplace because that's something that you would do once you go into a job. Um, and we think it's, it creates a more sociable educational environment because you work as a group and you get to know the people on your degree or on your course a lot better. And it also personalizes your education so that you get to do something you're actually interested in rather than being forced to do um, courses that you have to do in order to do your degree but that you might not actually want to pursue once you graduate. <laughs> okay, so the way that we um that we kind of envision uh, implementing this is through like optional modules that you know would be part of your degree but so that we don't exclude people who might want to go into traditional academia because obviously the system that is in place at the moment is probably quite well suited to that um so also what we thought by incorporating it to a, a traditional like degree structure so it wouldn't be like you would have like a problem-based learning degree you would have a history degree or whatever your degree is currently <coughs> And we think that this would help maybe to mitigate potential discrimination by employers um, against, you know, how sometimes there could be a sort of educational elitism where it's seen that like certain types of education are better than others, even if they're actually not more useful or more practical or, you know, X, Y, and Z.
Um, so, and also it should not be limited by degree choice, uh, just as we were saying um, before, just that it should be open to all degrees, not just medicine and law as it is at the moment. Um, yeah, so uh, what, how we envision this in terms of the exam basis is that you would maybe come up with your own research problems um, and then research modules would be graded by a presentation instead of the final exam. So this would be just as well, again, changing this emphasis on the kind of traditional like reading, writing intensive courses to a more like person to person interaction, which we feel would better prepare you for you know, life in general. But then traditional um, traditional final exams, we think could be replaced by forty eight hour exams, where you get um, you get the problem, you get to take it home, you get to look at books and the internet as you would with any problem in real life, and then you answer it within forty eight hours. You know. Okay. Next slide. Uh, yeah. So the module structure is maybe um, we what we had is a bit of a bit of like a. Uh, road bump when we were thinking about what would happen with lectures because obviously lectures aren't going to be hugely useful in like a research project so what we thought is maybe the traditional lecture could be replaced by like one lecture per week where your research uh, process and objectives is you know outlined to you and this would you know progress as your research progresses so as you're getting into your final stages this is um, changed. Oh and yeah you would have designated groups to work with and you'd get a slot of allocated by you in a university like in a tutorial so you could go to the room at this time and have your meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and the, right, so the summary for the benefits, we thought that this would prepare you better for your fourth year when you have to work independently on your own dissertation uh, so that you're thinking in a more research-oriented way. Also, I mean, certain universities, particularly Edinburgh, which is a research-based university, there's a huge disparity between the treatment of like undergraduate students and master's students because all the you know all the faculty are very research oriented. So by including a more research oriented <laughs> structure in the undergraduate structure, we thought that the whole university would be more cohesive as a unit. Um, and then yeah, increases student and staff interactions in a meaningful way, etc. Um, this the next one. And uh, that's it. The next one. Okay, and then the kind of the other branch of um, what we were thinking about is like incorporating internships as something that is just sort of standard for people who are like 18 or 20 or whatever age kind of and are not sort of definitely set on kind of what they want to do. So um, the target audience for that would be kind of like local businesses, but also things like kind of the foreign office, like government organisations, just all the kind of things that are the biggest employers in this country. Um, and then, sorry, next slide. Um, so, yeah, and basically, it's that you kind of apply a bit like how you apply to a lot of universities doing. Um, you can apply for a three year course or a four year course doing the third year abroad. Only this would be kind of the third year as an internship opportunity. Um, and so, the kind of the university would kind of cultivate these links for you. And obviously, you'd, you, you're opting in, so you'd have to be enthusiastic, but you do have that option, and it's kind of there for you. Um, and the next one. Um, so basically we thought that obviously like universities would probably like the scheme but maybe businesses would be less keen. And so we thought it could be kind of similar to the um, fair trade campaign whereby like businesses who are partaking in this would have some kind of like logo or stamp to show that they were doing that and this would be a kind of public image kind of improvement and therefore that would be incentive um, in some way. <coughs> And, and yeah, like it already exists in Bath, like Bath is really, really good for finding like third year placements. I think like somebody goes to Bath and knows that's true, yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but like obviously if it works there, that could kind of work across the board and not be limited to kind of specific subjects and like specific areas which kind of lead more naturally into certain career paths. Um, and you the next slide? So <coughs> basically, yeah, like lots of, Lots of people who do kind of find internships and are lucky enough to do them kind of maybe over the summer, they often end up with um, like traineeships if they've been good uh, for when they graduate, which is a kind of huge advantage, obviously. And if internships were kind of more wide ranging, then that could like really increase like graduate prospects. And yeah, I mean, also if you do an internship in something you always thought you wanted to do and then you hate it, obviously mm -hmm. that's kind of 
good as well. Um, and, it, <laughs> and it sort of ties in with problem-based learning in the sense that, again, you're in a position to, like, to be kind of doing something that isn't just academic. You're kind of in the real world much more. Um, so, yeah.